Strategic Living with Brian Holmes, episode number 37. Hi, this is Ray Edwards from RayEdwards.com, and you're listening to Brian Holmes, one of my favorite people and certainly one of my favorite podcasts. Welcome, everyone, to the program today. My name is Brian Holmes, and you have found the Strategic Living Podcast, where we are all about transforming minds, developing leaders, awakening dreams, activating destinies. And yes, we believe we can change nations. Hey, it's our desire to see you healed, your mind renewed and transformed. We want to see you discover all that God has created you to be. We want to see you fully engaged in doing all that he's given you to do. Well, going to be an exciting program today. It's great to have you with us on the program. I hope you're ready for a wonderful episode and a great time together. Let's get started, everybody. So awesome to have you with us on the program today. Again, if this is your first time to be with us on the program, welcome to you. If it's a repeat time for you, you've been here several times, you've enjoyed the content we're providing, welcome back and thank you so much for faithfully listening and partaking in the conversation that we're having here. I am extremely, extremely pumped up right now. Uh, I'm also very exhausted, to be honest with you. I've been traveling for the last four or five weeks straight. I was in Detroit, Michigan for about four or five days at a conference. I came home for a few days and then left for Tulsa, Oklahoma. We had a great meeting there. And then I was home for less than 36 hours, and I flew out to Orlando, Florida, where I attended the first part of that week. I attended the launch conference with Michael Hyatt, Ken Davis, uh, just Dan Miller was there, a lot of our great friends that we have known and come to love, and what a marvelous time that was for me personally, just learning so much, growing so much in my understanding of how to take the message God's given us and get it out to a much broader audience. I want to thank uh, Michael and Ken Davis and all of those who contributed to making that meeting such a great success and having such great impact. Uh, Well done, and thank you so much. Uh, I ended that week in Orlando, Florida, administering one of our Ties That Bind intensive workshops and I still struggle with calling it a workshop or a seminar because, truthfully, it's an encounter. It's, a, it's an experience because we walk people through, first of all, learning what is a soul tie and how these unhealthy connections limit us from becoming all God's called us to be. But then we also, uh, through that identification process, we bring individuals who participate to a place where they can sever, disconnect from, and be utterly healed from their past And what a powerful time we had at Church on the Living Edge. My friend, Dr. Mark Sharona, his wonderful staff hosted us so well, and I am ever so grateful, and I'm also very thankful for the results. I am just confident that lives were transformed and changed. I am confident that that body of believers there in Orlando has been eternally impacted by uh, this teaching and what God did there. So grateful for that. Uh, I didn't even get to come home from Orlando. I went straight to Spokane, Washington, where I had the great privilege of sitting down with another great friend of mine, Ray Edwards. And if you're not familiar with Ray, at rayedwards.com, what a tremendous job he is doing in the business sector, tremendous man of God, tremendous man of faith. And uh, we were together in a mastermind group of tremendous leaders, great thought leaders, great ideapreneurs. And I'm just so grateful for the time we spent there last Monday. Well, as we are uh, here today recording this episode, I'm I'm the second day back in my office after this whirlwind tour uh, the last four weeks, and I'm grateful to be home and glad to be back with you behind the microphone here at Strategic Living. Well, today is going to be a fantastic, fantastic episode. Let me just preface what I'm going to share with you today by talking about this. When God escorts you, or invites you into a new season, 
into a new place of opportunity, into a, a completely fresh and new place. It always involves change and transition, and it always involves the challenge of grappling with the past and embracing the future. So I want to ask you these questions. Are you currently experiencing some form of upheaval in your life? Are you experiencing some type of change or transition? If you are, I feel your pain. I get it. I understand it. Been there, done that, T-shirt, and a video. Do you feel as though God is inviting you or moving you towards something new and fresh and exciting, even though you're not really completely clear on what that is? Well, today on the program, I want to share with you 10 things that I have personally learned in the process of transition, 10 things I've learned in the process of my personal transition. Well, we know that change means progress. We also know that growth, personal growth, physiological growth, uh, the growth of our character, all of these things requires change. There literally can be no growth without change. And so... In our lives, we deal with this thing we call transition. I've talked about it once or twice in the program before, but I've never shared with you some of my personal experiences. And I want to do that today because I think there are some really key things that I've learned that may be of help to you. I'm talking to a lot of people around the nation right now, really around the world, and I'm finding that so many people are at a place in their life where they feel as though they are right in the middle of some significant shift, some real change. Maybe it's a change of worldview. Maybe it's a change of philosophy. Maybe it is a change of direction or maybe a career change. Maybe it's even changes in relationships, as we have talked about much on this program. Wherever you are today, I want to tell you this. If you are in the middle of that process, don't stop, please. Because to stop is to get stuck. (laughs) Continue on. Get to the other side. I want to share with you these 10 things right now that I think are going to be helpful to you. One thing I want to share as a scriptural principle is this. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding in all of your ways. How many? All. And I like to chuckle and say that in the Greek, all means all. In the Hebrew, all means all. In Latin, Spanish, all means all. It all means all. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. The Bible promises us that he will direct your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your paths. Well, How does that relate to what we're going to talk about today? Well, Here's what I have found in my personal experience. I have been learning to completely rely on him. I have found that if I trust in my experience, in my ways, and in my own grid or my own perspective, that many times I will cheat myself out of what really lies ahead for me in my future. And so I am growing in my ability to trust God completely with my future. And to trust him that if he has me in a process, the process is for my good. Also, I can say that if we acknowledge him in all of our ways, that means that we really can't compartmentalize our relationship with him. If he's going to to be our Lord and if he's going to be our master, if he's going to be our leader, then we can't say, okay, I want to seek you out for counsel and understanding on this area, but I don't need you over here. No, in all of our ways, in every aspect of our life, wherever we find ourselves in this particular season, we must acknowledge him. That word acknowledge is a compound word. I like to frame it like this. Acquire knowledge. In all of your ways, get his knowledge. Acquire his understanding. Go after what he knows about you. Acquire knowledge. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he then will direct your paths. 
Well, let me give you these 10 things that I believe are what I have learned personally from my own season of transition. Number one, everything is for a season in its season. Ecclesiastes 3, of course, speaks to this. There is a time and a season for every event under heaven. Everything has a place. Everything has a time. Time to live, a time to die, a time to mourn, a time to laugh. There's all these different juxtapositions that we see in that passage. The point is, is that transition, by definition, is the movement between point A and point B. It is the the process that lies in between a previous season and a new season. You can't just go from one to the next just overnight. There is this journey between that is called transition. But wherever you have been, whatever you have been doing, whatever you have been experiencing, whatever level you've been functioning on, everything is for a season. And it is walked out in its season. Here's the thing about this. When something's season has come to an end, it is imperative that you don't try to revive or resuscitate or put on life support the old season. When something's season comes to an end, know that God is setting before you a brand new season, a brand new opportunity. It is probably going to look different than what you expected. In fact, I can almost assure you it will be different from what you have known in the past, because by definition, it is a new season. So number one, everything is for a season. Number two, this is a a vital thing that I've learned. If I perform to meet man's expectations, then I risk missing the blessing of what God has prepared for me in this season. If I perform, if I make decisions, if I make choices, if I, if I craft my life in a way to meet man's expectations, then I stand a very good chance that I will not meet God's expectations, and therefore I may miss the full measure, the full scope of the blessing and the prosperity and the work that he has for me. You know, one of the things that I have personally grappled with in the last couple of years as God has been working to grow me is that I have always had this need for man's approval. I have always had this desire in me, this innate drive to please people and to make everybody happy and to make sure that everybody is satisfied and I'm, I'm, I'm okay, you're okay, all God's children, we okay. And my tendency has always been that rather than being super clear on what God has specifically instructed me to do, or rather than being specifically clear and focused on the direction that maybe God is is calling for me to go, I have, of course, been attentive to what he's saying and, and longing to perform that and do that and be that. But my need to perform for people's expectations has drawn me away from that focus and I default to this people-pleasing mode, and so I begin to perform to meet man's expectations, and in doing so, I veer off of the path, and I never arrive at the destination that God intended for me. So how do you, how do you battle with that? How do you deal with that? Well, if you have a tendency, as I have, to perform to man's expectations, I would like to encourage you by telling you what I've discovered, and that is that my Heavenly Father, your Heavenly Father, approves of you. He loves you. He affirms you. I can say He approves of me. He loves me. He affirms me. Therefore, I am only compelled to perform for one, capital O-N-E, and that is Him. And really, when I use the word perform for one, I'm not talking about that I've got to do something to earn his approval. He already approves of me. He already loves me. He already affirms me. He believes in me more than I believe in myself. So my only obligation, my only desire is to please him and and just simply be the person he has created me to be. And in doing that, I bring glory to God I am a person who is administering the kingdom of God, and I am being Christ in the earth. 
Number two, if I perform to meet man's expectations, I risk missing the blessing of what God has prepared for me. Number three, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. This is an old proverb, I suppose, and I'm not even sure who to credit this quote to, but when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Well, there are several principles that go right along with that. One of them is when you say yes to what God is setting before you, the relationships, the resources, the money, and the opportunities associated with your purpose and your calling, they begin to show up at your door. In 2012, January as it were, I went away for a time of prayer and, and solitude and really just wanting to, to try to get clear on some things. I, I sensed very clearly that God was doing a work in my heart and wanting to, to speak to me and help me to see some things, and boy, did he ever. I've shared some things on this program about that. Uh, but at that place of really a crossroads in my life, there were certain things that I knew I had been called to accomplish, certain things that I knew I'd been called to focus on and build, certain assignments in my life that I really cared about deeply, but I had gotten so busy doing other things that I had neglected the very thing that God had really put before me. And back in 2012, I really can tell you that God arrested my heart. He, he, he got a hold of me at a place and at a particular time. And in that precious encounter, something shifted in me, and I said yes. I said a great big yes. Now, that's not to say that I'd been disobedient or I'd been rebellious or I'd said no to him. It's just that I recognize, no, this is a different season God's wanting to bring me into. It's, he's inviting me to participate with him on a whole different level now, and it's going to require some change in my life. This is If I say yes to God at this place, it is going to thrust me into a season of transition that will fundamentally change the way I do life. And I knew it. But my heart and my spirit said, yes. Now, the principle we gave you is when the student is ready, the teacher appears. So when I said yes to God at a heart level at that point, do you know that relationships began to show up in my life that I'd never imagined I could have? New friendships, new mentors, resources, money, uh, strategic partnerships, opportunities. When I said yes, when I was ready to really pursue the thing that he had given me to do, all the things that I would need to begin to move in that direction begin to show up without me having to fight for them or strive for them. When the student is ready, the teacher appears. Number four, this is one of my most favorite quotes, and I, I'm sure somebody else has said it, but I know I've said it many times, so I like to give my own self credit. Nothing changes until something changes. Nothing changes until something changes. If you are not completely satisfied with where you have been, the results you've been able to generate with the fruit of your life at this stage, if you know you are not meeting and maximizing your potential, if you know you are not absolutely performing at the highest level that God has given you capacity to perform at, if you are not satisfied, I will tell you that something has to change. Because nothing by way of the fruit or the results will change until something in you changes. We're talking about transition. We're talking about 10 things that I have learned in my own journey, in my own transition. Until I became willing to look deeply into my own heart and address things, insecurities, needs for approval, and and all these other things that I personally had to grow in until I was willing to, to change in those areas by way of healing, by way of processing, by way of personal growth, I could not expect that any of the results in my life would be different. Someone once said that until the pain of remaining the same exceeds the pain of change, we will choose to remain the same. In other words, some people have a very, very, very high tolerance for the pain associated with not changing. But at some point when you cross that threshold and it is no longer tolerable for you to continue in the discomfort, the frustration, the pain of remaining the same, 
then you engage in the process of transition and change, and it moves you toward a brighter, a newer, a fresher future that God has for you. So number four, nothing changes until something changes. The fifth thing that I have learned in the last couple of years during my process is that what I am going through today becomes the building blocks for my tomorrow. I know that sounds profound, or maybe it sounds simple to you, but sometimes the the difficult, arduous, even sometimes painful process of dealing with deep-seated roots and things that have to be changed in us, sometimes the pain and the transition and the changing of relationships, all those things that, that are associated with transition, sometimes what we're going through seems like it's just too much to bear. What you have to know is, is that whatever you're going through in transition becomes the foundation or the building blocks for what is on the other side of the transition. How you handle this season, how you deal with the pain, how you allow God to process your heart and heal your heart and deal with your own inadequacies and things, that those become the building blocks for this future that you're desiring to create. But number five, what I am going through today is the building blocks for my tomorrow. That leads me to the sixth thing that I learned, and that God is always working on me. Number six, God is always working on me, and I am capitalizing me, M-E. I, I would love to point my finger at everybody else. I'd love to look around and defer responsibility and accountability to anybody and everybody. But the truth of the matter is, is that God is always wanting to grow me. God's always wanting me to be developed. He is always challenging me to a higher standard, a higher level. He wants to release more, therefore he requires more. So in this working on me, I have to be willing to look at my weaknesses and my liabilities. I have to allow God's light to shine on me in such a way where if there are areas in my character that need to be enhanced or to be developed or to be challenged, if there are areas where I'm lacking in integrity, if there are areas where I am weak and I am not able to persevere when things get tough and God's wanting to strengthen me and make me even tougher, these areas of personal growth and development are always before me. Can I just tell you, we never arrive. There, is, there will never be a time in any of our lives when we get to a point where God is not desiring to take us higher, to take us farther, and to release to us more blessing, more benefits, more prosperity, more effectiveness, more influence. God's always wanting to grow us. The question is, are we willing to allow him to work on us? The number six, God is always working on us. Number seven, this one right here has truly transformed my world. And I will just admit to you, I am still in the process of allowing this truth that I've come to to change how I deal with my life day to day. Number seven, while I am capable of doing many things, I cannot do everything and expect to do anything well. I'm going to say it again. While I am truly capable of doing many things, I cannot do everything and expect to do anything well. What do you mean, Brian? You know, one of the most important words you and I can ever master the use of is this simple little two-letter word called no. You know, I consider myself a pretty talented guy. I'm a drummer. I can sing a little bit. I love music. I can write. I can speak. I can coach. I, there's a thousand things that I can get by with and do adequately, and there's quite a few things that I can do really, 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 really well. But when I am not focused on the one or the two primary things that God has called me to do, then I am dividing my resources emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, mentally, so many different places that I 
am not doing anything effectively. I'm, I'm involved in a lot of things, but I'm not really accomplishing much. And I would imagine that that is a lot of people that I'm talking to and so many that you might know. It's not just about how talented you are in some areas. It's not just about how many things, you know, jack of all trades, master of none kind of a deal. No, I believe we're in a season of time where as God is moving us from one season to the next, from one pinnacle to another, from one mountaintop to another place that is higher and better and greater, I believe he is requiring of so many of us that we really begin to decide where are we going to focus our energy, our attention, our resources, our talents, our skills? Where can we really shine and be most effective in the kingdom? Number seven, while I'm capable of doing many things, I cannot do everything and expect to do anything well. Number eight, it is impossible to engage a new season when I'm still carrying the old season's baggage. Now, I talk a lot about baggage because I, I'm a guy who deals a lot in the soul arena. I'm a person who believes tremendously in the value of inner healing and dealing with old issues and grappling with unforgiveness and uh, unhealthy connections and forgiving ourselves of past failures. I, I believe in all of that. And so in light of that, as, I, as I'm the teacher, I'm having to now subscribe to my own teaching in that I've noticed in my transition in the last two years that I have had to lay down a lot of old hurts, a lot of old wounds. I have had to actually release and let go of a lot of old grudges and feelings toward people that have disappointed me. I have actually had to, to release I thought I'd forgiven people, but I have to do more releasing of people and forgiving in order to really come into this new season free and light and and nimble and able to move and navigate and, and transition more easily. In fact, let me give you this truth, and this goes with number eight, and that is that how you leave one season is how you will enter the next. How you leave one place in your life is going to define how you enter the next place. In other words, if you are leaving one job and you're ticked off and you're frustrated, you're disillusioned and you're angry or you're hurt and you go get hired on at the new company and you haven't resolved in your mind and your heart that old stuff, you're going to bring your attitude, you're going to bring your frustration, you're going to bring your disappointment, your lack of trust, all of those things into the new environment and you will actually sabotage the new opportunity. You cannot engage the new season God wants to release to you in this time right now and insist on hanging on to all the old junk from the previous season. If you are carrying unforgiveness, bitterness, if you are carrying frustration, disappointment, any man, the list is long and notorious. If you're carrying any baggage, I would greatly encourage you before you come into this next place, if you're in the middle of transition, this is the place right now to start dropping off baggage. When you get to the threshold of the new opportunity and you enter into that new place on the other side of transition, go in with a clean slate. Go in with a pure heart. Go in with nothing defiling the potential that is in your very being. Number eight, it's impossible to engage a new season carrying the old season's baggage. Number nine, there is nothing more important in my life. This is Now, I'm sharing with you things that I have learned and come to believe in my own transition. There is nothing more important in my life than the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not trying to be religious, but I will tell you that in the last two years, I have come to understand appreciate and value the leadership of God Almighty in my life. I actually have come to believe that without him, as Scripture says, I can do nothing. <laughs> I've come to believe that if I, and I know God has given us prolific mind and he has given us the capacity to rationalize, to make decisions, and we do those things. But I have made it very clear to him 
as my Lord, that I am wanting him to lead me. I'm wanting him to guide me. In fact, the Bible says of the Holy Spirit that he leads us and guides us into all truth, meaning the Holy Spirit's role in my life is to function as the leadership I need to get where he's trying to get me. If I want truth, if I want righteousness, if I want right decisions, if I want to make the right choices, if I want to uh, align myself with a business partner, I want the leadership of the Holy Spirit helping me to know what's his truth. Am I or am I not supposed to be in that relationship? Am I or am I not supposed to do that engagement or sign that contract? Am I or am I not supposed to to write that book or do this right now? I, I want to lean on his leadership. Jesus modeled this for us. He told us that he only does what he sees the Father doing, and he only says what he hears the Father saying. He modeled for us a life that was so prolific, so fulfilled, so successful, changed the world. And he did so on the premise of the leadership of his heavenly father. Number nine, there's nothing more important in my life than the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Number 10, number 10, this is what I've learned in my process. Never quit or give up in the middle of transition. The other side of transition is so worth the process. Michael Hyatt calls the middle of anything, he calls it the messy middle. You're, you're, you got a choice in the middle to either revert and go backwards to what you've been comfortable with but what wasn't satisfying you, or you have the choice to move on through the middle, the messy middle, the difficult middle, sometimes the painful middle of transition, and know that somewhere down the road a bit, This process is going to come to an end. This process will end, and you will be on the other side of transition. You will have been transitioned from where you were to where God desired you to be. And once you get to the other side of the transition, it is so worth the process. Now let me wrap this up by sharing with you a personal story. The last two years of my life have been quite remarkable. As I mentioned before, uh, in January of 12, I went away for this time of prayer and being with the Lord, and, and I just really had some things that I had to grapple with, and that was really the beginning of this process for me. Throughout the course of that year, just very gently, very systematically, we were moving through the beginning stages of, of all right, this is where you need to move. This is what you need to be doing. These are things that, that this season is coming to an end, and this, this part here has served its purpose, and now I'm, I'm moving you to focus here. And, and all these things begin to unfold. Coming into 2013, uh, very similarly, we, we began to really say, okay, you know, what's next? What does this year look like? What, what's ahead in this process? And we began to feel strongly about changing this and moving that. And then then, as we said about the teacher showing up, things began to happen that were way outside of my control, but they were coming to me. There, We were actually attracting activity that would be moving us down the road towards where God wanted us to be. And so my encouragement to you is, as you go through this, what happens, you, you come to a point where things begin to happen outside of you that are indications to you that you're on the right track opportunities begin to present themselves that actually set you up for tremendous blessing and favor and engagement down the road. You may not hit it right now, but down the road, it's going to be there for you. And so God began to do this amazing process. And as 2013 began to unfold, man, it was one thing after the other. So now here I am two full years later from what I consider to be the beginning of this transition for me. And these 10 things are 10 of the key principles that I've learned in the process. Number one, 
Everything is for a season. Everything. Everything is for a season. Number two, if my propensity is to perform to meet man's expectations, I risk missing the blessing and the full measure of what God's prepared for me. Number three, when the student is ready, the teacher always appears. Or when you say yes to what God is inviting you to engage in, the relationships, the resources, the money, the opportunities begin to show up. Number four, nothing changes until something changes. Number five, whatever you're going through right now today, whatever you're experiencing, whatever, however painful the process may be at this moment, what you're going through actually becomes the building blocks and the foundation for your tomorrow. Number six, know this, God is always working on you. Yes, I know people outside of you, they need to get worked on too, but but you and God have to work out your own deal. Personal growth and development, weaknesses and liabilities must be grappled with. Your character, your integrity, what is God trying to build in you? Number seven, while I'm capable of doing many things, I cannot do everything and expect to do anything well. That's so important. Number eight, it is impossible to engage in a new season carrying the old season's baggage. Number nine, there is nothing more important in my life than the leadership of the Holy Spirit. I invite you today, take that one seriously. Try it. Inquire of the Lord and see if he won't lead you. And number 10, never quit in the middle of the transition because the other side, what's on the other side, makes the process well worthwhile. Well, in my own life, I can tell you that Coming into 2014, I crossed over. I believe, I really believe, and I'm not saying God's finished with me. In fact, uh, we move from transition to transition many times. But I will tell you, this season has now come to a culminating place where even in the last few weeks, I recognize that, you know what? I've crossed a threshold, and I'm now entering into the new season, the new place, the new arena that God has always had prepared for me. But before I could gain access to that world, God had to process me and deal with some things in me so that when I came to this place, I'd be ready, I'd be qualified, and I wouldn't sabotage the blessing that he's releasing in my life right now. I want to encourage you, don't push back against transition. Don't fight against it. In fact, work with it because the outcome and the result and the fruit of the process is so beautiful, so rewarding. I've never been more excited about any season of my life as I am right now. I've never been so confident and so sure that what is ahead is so awesome and so transformational. Now, you asked me that a year ago when I was in the middle of the transition. I, I wasn't so sure. i got to be honest. I just was not real sure. But today, I, I want to be the testimony for you so that you can have the confidence to complete and finish the process God has you in the middle of. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't back down. Finish what you started. It's going to be worth it. Well, a couple of very quick announcements to wrap up this episode of the Strategic Living Online Radio Program. On May the 7th, May the 7th at 7 p.m., that's a Wednesday, by the way, Wednesday, May the 7th at 7 p.m., we're going to be offering our next webinar, Change Your Mind, Change Your World. We're going to be dealing with how beliefs are formed how we actually behave and act in accordance with the truth as we believe it to be. Your beliefs literally govern your decisions, your choices, your actions, your behaviors, your patterns, your habits, all those things. And we want to talk about how if you want to change your world, you've got to go inside and deal with the root beliefs, the core beliefs. You've got to know if there are limiting beliefs in there, they've got to be uprooted and replaced with what God knows to be true about you and about your assignment. Change your mind Change Your World webinar on Wednesday, May the 7th at 7 o'clock p.m. 
Uh, I have a couple of openings at this moment coming into this part of the new year, the second quarter, for coaching clients. If you are looking for someone to come alongside of you, I would love to uh, have a discussion with you, a a no-charge, 30-minute phone consultation just to see what your needs are, what you're thinking, where you are at this present time, where you believe God was wanting to take you, and we can discuss whether or not my relationship with you as a coach would be a fit and would be of assistance to you. Also, if you'd like to have us come and speak at your event, your conference, your uh, to come and maybe do a Ties That Bind workshop or a New Beginnings workshop, whatever we could do to serve you in the area of speaking and training, we'd love to have that opportunity to do so. I really appreciate you considering those things. For more information, go to brianholmes.com. You'll find information on each of those right there. Well, if you'd like to comment on this episode, go to brianholmes.com forward slash 037. Go to the show notes for the episode. At the very bottom, you'll see a comment section. We would love so much to hear from you. That would mean so much to us. Uh, You can leave questions, comments. You can engage in conversation with us there. That would be a blessing if you would do that. Also, I invite you to subscribe to our weekly updates. Once a week, we send out an update. Uh, for all that is happening at brianholmes.com, our podcast, our Monday Mastery, blog post, etc., subscribe to us in iTunes, share it with your friends. Hey, we trust that something that we have shared today has been a blessing to you. Until next time, we love you, we care about you, and we'll see you back here next week.